Hey gang, welcome to your 15th JavaScript in the DOM tutorial and in this video we're going to go over checkbox events. Okay then, so I want to show you one more thing when it comes to adding event listeners and that is the change event. So the change event occurs when a form element, for example, changes. And that could be when we select a checkbox or when we press a radio button. Those things are changing state, right? So what we're going to do is create some kind of checkbox down here to hide all the books. And when we check it and it has a little tick in it, I want to react to that change event to hide the books. And then when we untick it, I want to react to that change event to show the books again. All right. So the first thing we need to do is add in that HTML. So I've come down to the bottom form here, add book, and I'm going to add in a new input field and label. So I'm just going to paste these in and it's an input type of checkbox with an ID of hide and also a label for hide, which associates the two together. And the text is hide all books. Now I'll save that. We also have a couple of styles for these elements right here. Add book hide. It gives it a width of 30 pixels. And this label has a line height of 52 pixels. So dead simple. Now, if we check this out in a browser, then we're going to see this thing right here. So what I want to happen is when we check it to hide the books, when we uncheck it to show the books. So let's add in that functionality. So let's go to app.js and I've just minimized these two functions using these arrows right here. And we want to hide the books this time. So how are we going to do this? Well, the first thing we need to do is grab a reference of the checkbox. So I'll create a constant and I'm going to call this hide box and I'm going to set this equal to document dot query selector. And the element I want is the hide element. That's the ID of the input field. So we have a reference to that now. Now we want to add an event listener, which is going to listen for that change event. And remember, the change event is going to occur whenever this changes. So when I tick it and when I untick it, it's changing, right? So it's going to listen for that event and then we can fire a callback function. So let's add that event listener. I'm going to say hide box dot add event listener. And then the event we're listening for is the change event. Then we pass a callback function. We'll just pass in the event object as well. And down here we want to do something. So what do we want to do? Well, first of all, we want to check if the checkbox has been checked or unchecked. They're both change events and we want to distinguish the two. So we can do that by using the checked property on a checkbox. So we have the checkbox right here. So we can check if this is checked by saying if, and then in brackets, hide box dot checked. Now, this is going to return true if it is checked and it's going to return false if it's not checked. So if it's true, it means we've checked it and we want to hide the books. If it's not true, it means we've unchecked it and we want to show the books again. So let's do the true case first of all. When we've checked it, we want to hide the books. Now the books are in this UL right here and we already have a reference to that UL pit. We have this list constant. So let's grab that and paste it down here. And what we want to do is change the display of this. We want to change a style and we know how to do that. We can say dot style, then the property we want to change is going to be display. And we're going to set that equal to none. So when we check this, it's going to hide that UL. Then we'll add on an else statement. And underneath this time, what we want to do is show the list. So we'll say list dot style dot display. And then we want to set this equal to initial or block, if you like. Both of those are going to show it. So if we save this and check it out in a browser. Now, if we click this, we're hiding the books. When we unclick it, we're showing the books. So we're reacting to this change event on this form field right here. And it's not just this form field which has a change event. A lot of different form fields have that event. So it could be a radio button or something else. But that's how we react to it. 